What is going on everyone and welcome back to Too Much Tech and in today's video we're going to be reviewing the Razer Wolverine V2 Chroma. This is Razer's new high-end controller available for Xbox and it is compatible with all Xbox One and also Xbox series of consoles. And this controller also does work with Windows and that was the primary way that I've been testing this controller is just with Windows and they also do have an app to change all your binds and everything for all of the different buttons and functions of this controller. So we'll get into that later on in the video. But let's dive into the updates that have been made to this controller compared to the previous Wolverine controller as well as the older Wolverine controllers. This video is sponsored by Custom Keys. Check out their site with some of these extremely unique custom cables with excellent color choices and combos you haven't seen anywhere else. After working with them and being a customer over the past year, I really have been enjoying the products quite a bit as you guys may have noticed on the channel. My personal favorites are the rainbow cable as well as the blue Z cable, but I find myself using the plain Jane black on black cable most often. Also, if you're in the market for a mouse pad to complete your desk setup, they also stock x-ray pad desk pads as well. Use code TMTSAVE at checkout for a discount. And if you live in the UK, the shipping is free. Thanks again to Custom Keys for being a longtime supporter of the channel. And I'm sure you guys will love their products too. I will have Custom Keys linked in the description below. So be sure to use code TMTSAVE at customkeys.net. So the previous Wolverine controller looked very similar but the d-pad was a little bit different than this one now we have a full d-pad and then also these rear buttons are pretty nice to have as well and even though they're not perfect i'm still glad that they're there especially these bottom two because these two are the ones that i find that are the most usable between all four back buttons the top two i really can't recommend binding anything that you need in a situation where you need to do something very quick but the bottom two i definitely would bind if you need to jump or reload or melee or something like that any action that you you need to do that are more reactionary and a lot less planned, I would definitely buy into these bottom two triggers because these are going to be the easiest and most natural to reach. So you're going to grab right here with your middle fingers. These are going to be the easiest to reach. We'll talk about a little bit more soon, but I do not like these paddles in comparison to one of the previous generation designs that Razer used. So I do wish that they would go back to that. Next, we have our trigger stops here. So you can set your triggers to be full press, which is quite a bit of range here. So that's going to be great for, you know, like a drive game or maybe a story game that doesn't need a half press of the trigger like you would in an FPS game but this still works quite well and the trigger stops have also been vastly improved in comparison to the previous generation of the Wolverine controllers I would notice that sometimes if you press down on the trigger really hard on the older controllers sometimes the trigger stop would actually disengage and you would like slip and do like a forceful full press and then you have to re-engage your trigger stop as well so I'm glad that the build quality uh, in that aspect has been vastly improved speaking of build quality the build quality of this is a ton better than any of the previous generation controllers I like the matte finish on the top this does not get sweaty at all and I actually do wish that they would have used this coating throughout the entire controller but these rubberized grips on the side these aren't bad even though my hands still do get a little bit sweaty but it's not really that bad it's definitely manageable I don't find that my hands slip they do get a little bit warm though but my room is also a thousand degrees so that could be part of the problem and then up top we have a couple more buttons these I usually like to bind to either like reload or switch weapons or melee or something like that but typically I'll bind jump and melee or switch weapons down here but uh, I don't know like B and Y I find comfortable binding to this button here or this button up here either one really but it's all personal preference and there's software to make adjustments and whatnot then the connection has been changed to USB type C so obviously you get a USB type C cable in the box and you do have this pretty nice braided cable as well that is a uh, pretty long I have no problems like using this cable to reach over to my PC but I'll put the length of the cable on the screen right now so you guys know exactly how long it is and if that's gonna work for you and it has to work for you because this controller is not wireless this is indeed a wired controller i'm pretty sure that has something to do with like microsoft having rights to wireless controllers on xbox for pro controllers and whatnot or even like any third-party controllers i don't think we've seen a third-party controller that's wireless for the xbox other than the scuff controllers because obviously they take the regular xbox controllers and then modify the crap out of them other than scuff and the elite controller that's a first party controller they're all going to be wired if it's like a modified pro controller from a third party the mechanical buttons do return so i'll give you guys a quick sound test right now
I do enjoy the sound of the buttons quite a bit as well as the feel, so no complaints there. Everything is great in terms of the button feel. The D-pad is vastly improved. I do like that they use the newer style of Xbox D-pad, like all of the new Xbox controllers. It's very similar to how they did like that one dome looking D-pad on the original Elite controller. The thumbsticks that I am using are the longer concave and shorter concave thumbstick. The longer one I use on the right, the shorter one I use on the left. If you use the longer one on the right, it'll help and make your aim a little bit better as soon as you start to get used to it but i do appreciate the extra length on the thumbstick it's quite nice to use but also in the box razor gives you another shorter concave thumbstick as well as a domed convex thumbstick as well these are both short so uh, you won't get any extra length from either of these as far as the feel of the thumbsticks they are very snappy the anti-friction rings on the sides are also really nice as well i can't tell if this material is like metal or plastic but either way it feels really Really nice to use and I don't have any issues as far as like feel or smoothness or friction with the thumbsticks. I will say though that I still think that the Power A thumbsticks are a little bit smoother but I do enjoy using these thumbsticks and they do feel pretty similar to the feel of like the Elite controller thumbsticks like before you add like all the additional tension that you're able to add on the Elite thumbsticks but personally I'm not really a big fan of adding like all that extra tension I just like to use whatever the stock configuration is because typically I don't have any problems with the stock thumbstick tension of any thumbsticks I have been using this controller for the past week or so I was on vacation this week actually and then I used it the week before the same week that I unboxed it and this controller is quite nice to use. I found that like my gameplay was a little bit improved, especially because recently I've been playing a ton of PC for the past few years and I, your boy needs a little bit of help when you use a controller. I need those buttons on the back, but this controller definitely fills a lot of needs when it comes to just having a lot of those pro features, like largely having those extra buttons and just the better tactility on the D-pad as well as the nice click feel on these back buttons. I don't love the placement of of these back buttons like I was saying earlier and the reason why is because the placement of the back buttons on the Wolverine Tournament Edition one of their older controllers with the older design just felt a lot more natural like the button was wider it was over a little bit more on both sides so it was a lot easier to reach and you didn't really have to reach that far to hit the button it was more of like a like a press and squeeze and it was very easy to actuate in quick succession where I feel like these buttons on the back these bottom two require a little bit more effort and the top two, don't even get me started. These require too much effort and you can't really do in a bind or in a pinch, at least not consistently and accurately, over time, you'll probably be able to, but during your initial adjustment period of probably a few months, it will take you quite a bit, especially to start using those top two in situations where you have to do things a lot more reactionary than you typically do when you have time to plan things out. A couple things that I noticed is that I definitely do think that the coding on the new controller is a lot better than the coding on the old controller. This one is quite a bit slippery, especially after a few years of use, like this controller I've had for, I want to say like three-ish, maybe four years at this point. It's it's been a while. It's definitely been at least three years since I initially got this controller and I have gotten a lot of use out of it. Haven't experienced thumbstick drift or anything. So as far as a long-term review, this controller still works perfectly, even though I don't game on console nearly as much as I used to. But let's just say after about two years of heavy use, this controller still survived pretty good. Now, do I feel like this controller is a huge upgrade in comparison to this one? Huge upgrade, I'm not really sure about that one. So if you look at the spectrum cycling on both controllers, obviously the older controller had a much better way of using that spectrum cycling mode that we know Razer is super huge on. It's having all those different RGB effects. The newer one is not that great. It's just taken really, really long to change color and it doesn't even do this wave effect that the older one did. Like this looks way better. I don't know who decided that this was a better implementation of RGB on an Xbox controller even though it's not necessarily needed just after you see this and you say this is the new one this looks like a huge downgrade to go to something like this as opposed to something like this and even the diffuser is a lot brighter too and I have the brightness on this one like maxed out so this is a direct one by one or this is a direct one-to-one -one comparison of uh, the max brightness of each RGB ring yeah you got two of them but they both look kind of lame in comparison to this one I digress the RGB is such a small thing to talk about as far as like controllers go so you do have alternate sensitivity levels that you can set with the clutch function where basically you can remap one of the back buttons or the 
the buttons up top to be this little clutch feature where you can set a different sensitivity and get either increased or slowed down sense based on if you're pressing that button or not, which I don't really find to be that useful just because it just feels a little bit jarring if you accidentally hit it. But if you get really good with it, I can definitely see how you could use this to maybe slow down if you're sniping or speed up if you're using something like an SMG or you're just trying to do a quick flick or do like a 360 or a trick shot or something like that. But personally, I don't really use the clutch function myself, so I don't really love it. Then as well as the vibration motors, you don't have the vibration in the triggers, which is really lame in my opinion. I like the feeling of having that vibration in the triggers when you're playing something other than a first person shooter game. But really, even in a first person shooter game, that just makes everything a little bit more immersive. So I really do enjoy having that functionality, especially for driving games or story games, again, because of that increased immersion. But without it, obviously you just have it in the trigger, not in the triggers, but in the grips of the controller, which is uh, exactly the same as an Xbox 360, which at this point is like 15 years old. So that's another big downgrade but essentially that is exactly the same as the other Wolverine V2 that is also cheaper. Then if we take a look at the triggers in the older Wolverine, we see that it has both impulse triggers as well as haptic rumbles in the grips of the controller. So I don't know why, again, Razer decided not to add those impulse triggers in this $150 controller that is a slight upgrade in my opinion over the other $100 controller that they released previously. And again, even that controller was a downgrade. So to close out this video before my camera overheats and we're gonna see if we can get past it, but basically I like the new controller. I don't love it though. I like it. I wish it was less money because I don't love it. Like I feel like $110 is a lot more reasonable uh, in comparison to $150 because they made this controller less ergonomic and it has less functionality than the previous generation of controllers. Even though the build quality upgrades are quite nice, like the build quality on this controller is a lot better than it used to be on the previous generation. So that's good, that's always welcome. And the thumbsticks I would say are arguably better as well because they use those with better materials or plastics or metals or whatever the thumbsticks are made of. And these anti-friction rings feel just a little bit better compared to the older anti-friction rings rubbing against the plastic. But uh, yeah, this controller, it's good. It's not fantastic though, and it does need a little bit more work. I would like to see the older paddle design, and I would also like to see those impulse triggers come back. And at that point, I really wouldn't have anything else to complain about other than it not being wireless. So if Razer can work on those few things and somehow, some way get Microsoft to agree and let the controller be wireless, then that would be fantastic. But otherwise, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoy, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in either one of these Xbox controllers, I will have them linked in the description below uh, to some Amazon affiliate links so you guys can check them out. But also, I do have some more controller reviews coming up very soon. I have one from Turtle Beach, which you guys may have seen some reviews floating around online about that one. But I also have the scuff, uh, uh, what is the new scuff called? I can't remember. The new scuff for Xbox as well. So we're gonna be checking that one out as well. And uh, yeah, eventually maybe we'll do a direct comparison between all of the top Xbox Pro controllers. Look out for that video soon. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.